who here doesn't know what is streaming? Ah, okay, interest. So I put some uh, information here or some uh, concepts. So what is streaming? So I like the last one, really clever. But uh, one of points that people get confused about streaming is with big data and data lake. A lot of buzzwords, they sound similar, they sound different. You can use together, you can use different. So when you talk about streaming, people normally think about a big amount of data. And it's not necessarily true, because you can do streaming with a small amount of data. For example, event streaming. So imagine I have a website, I'm tracking the mouse position or the number of clicks. So the amount of data is not big. So not necessarily need to be big data. So there is a really famous book outside. Who doesn't know about this book? So this book is Martin Kaplan, and the guy came with two nice ideas that I'm going to talk about today. So one of the ideas is there are a lot of buzzwords outside, event process, event streaming, complex event streaming, CQ, RS, and few another of other buzzwords. And then one of the crazy ideas here is that everything is the same, it's just different context. So there is thousands of buzzwords, but they are quite slight similar. The other theory, or this guy came around, is that the streaming came from something inside the database. It is exactly what I'm going to talk today. So because this we came with the fence name. Turning the database inside out. So then we find the streaming. So if you think in a normal web application, a normal application nowadays, you can divide in layers. So you have the front end, that you have a browser, you have the back end, and then the back end connects with the database. And then the idea is that the back end is stateless, so then different users can use different tables or you can have different systems using your system. So if you want to go in a crazy way or a difficult way and you don't want the back end as stateless, you can do four things in the database to handle the same thing. So one is replication, the second one is secondary index, so you can do caching or you can do materialized view. So the, the point here is I'm not going to deep dive in all the things, but I'm going to superficial way explain them, and then we are going to see one in specific, and I'm going to explain why. So replication is the idea that everything that happens in one table, let's say that give you a name for a table like a leader, he copies to a follow. So this is good when you want to query, because if you're going to query, then you have two cops, two tables, and then you divide the query itself. But then it's difficult to maintain because if you change one table, you need to guarantee that the other table is changed as well. So the database do this in a kind of a black box for you. You don't care about this. So it's easy to do it, but it creates a complexity around maintain, but it's good because it speed up the query. The second option is secondary index. So secondary index is you can create index of your column then if you search by element, you don't need to scan the entire column. You go in the index and you find the element in a easy way. And you can create index of the index and you can create index for much of columns. So then query is good because you don't need to scan the query. And it's kind of easy to do it. So caching, you can do caching on database and you can do caching on the front end or the application level. So the tables that are more used, or the columns that you use more, or the data that you use more, you, you save and cache. So the next user do the query, go in the cache. It's easy and good because then you have a better performance. But then if you change the database itself, you need to care about your cache. Or if you change the cache, you need to go and update the database. And again, you can do the same thing on the application level, on the code, and then create the nightmare. And the last one is the materialized view. Materialized view is the same idea of a normal view, but when you put materialized, it means that the view, the, the result is saved on disk. And again, so when I do the query, I have more than one place to go, so I can parallelize the thing. So this is a black box that the, database, the normal database, majority of them do it for you. So if we go and get just the replication one and try to understand more, what exactly what's happened inside that thing. So here I have my database as kind of a black box. So what's happened there is I write on the leader and then he managed to copy the, all things that I put there in the followers, can be more than one. 
and then I have my replication stream. And everything that happens there is what we call implementation details that is fixed at that, and you don't care, you don't see it. But imagine the situation that if I decide to open this, if I decide to get these implementation details and put it outside of the box, or let's say put this uh, open world uh, citizenship that can go there and can query, and exactly this is what is streaming. So if I get my replication stream and outside out, so I have my pipe or array or whatever you want to, my stack, my event log, whatever you want to call, and then I can append the elements in that, in that uh, uh, structure. And then I can have different people writing or different system writing, and again, I can have a different systems reading and consume that thing. So this is exactly what is streaming. So I, uh, elements or an array or a pipe or event streaming or a transactions log that I can add the elements. And when I add the elements there, I don't care about the format. We are going to see that I care about the velocity because I care number of messages per second or things like that, but I don't care about the format. And the famous open, open uh, uh, API outside is Kafka. So Kafka is the most common one and maybe was, was the first one, so it's the trained one outside. So what I can do with this? There is lots of user case. So fraud detection, imagine I have a, a lot of machines or a credit card. So if you are stolen a credit card of someone and start to tap in the machines in different place, then in real time or near real time, you can see, ah, there is something happened here, it's a thread. Then I send a push notification for someone or take some actions. Real time recommendations, so I go on Netflix, I watch a movie, or I go online on Amazon, try to buy something, and then do some recommendations. Ah, if you watch this series, because, so why not you watch this one? Or if you buy this book, you bought this book, why not you have a look in this one? Data capture, so IoT sensors around, uh, wearables like watch or smartphone and things like that. So I can get the data in real time. Social network, can get tweets, can have a look on Facebook or whatever. Imagine I have a company, I want to know what people are talking about my brand and social networks on real time and do some actions. Supply chain, I can have a look on my uh, blockchain network as well and do actions in them. So there is three famous things, so CN, security information and event management. Imagine I have a park of Windows machines, thousands of Windows machines, so the machine has logs for the application itself, has logs for some systems, has logs for firewall, firewall, antivirus, and things like that. So I get you all the logs, and I can analyze the logs in real time. CDC, change data capture. So there is thousands of tools outside that's doing this, but they can do it in an easy way, in a fast way, let's say more open with uh, streaming. ESB, Enterprise Service Bus, so I can do integration between different systems, I can do uh, uh, application integration, I can do data integration using streaming. So here is one example, so Oracle has the OCI streaming, that is a version of Kafka on the top of the cloud. It's Kafka compatible, you don't pay by storage, and you pay just for writing and read. So here I have different applications that can write and can read, and then here I have the concept that my application can write in one place and read in a different place. And I can combine them with soft, uh, functions as a service. So I write in the streaming, then I have a function that does something for me, summarize, calculate the average, or put in another place, copy from the object store to the Hadoop file system, or copy in an object store, or even copy in a specific uh, machine. And then I can read in a different place. So this is the idea. So there is lots of open sources or APIs outside. So Apache has Spark, Storm, Sansa, Flink, Flume, Kafka is the famous one. The commercial one, so AWS, Azure, Confluent, that is the company that keep Kafka and Oracle itself, they have them. So they have slight difference, but they do more or less the same thing. And then the other thing is the concept of the buzzwords. So we have stream process, events process, complex event process. We have DDD, we have C, uh, CQRs, Command Query Responsive Segregation. And then the idea is that 
They are different in some way, but they are the same thing. There is a famous book about DDDs. If you Google about the books about every software engineer should read, this book is there. This book is from 2004. And then the idea of the domain drive design was complex by the, end, by the time, but nowadays it's really trending because you can use streaming in an easy way. So this picture here is more or less the main uh, takeaway from the talk. So this is what is streaming itself. So I have my event streaming or my array, my pipe, or whatever you want to call. Then I can append elements there and I don't care about the format. And then I can read that thing and I can do, for example, a ETL and save in my data house. I can index Apache Solar or uh, Elasticsearch. Then I have a visualization on the top if I want. I can do some updates. I can save this in a external table or I can save in a file system. It can be Redoop, can be object store, can be in a cloud. And I can have another process or a function as a service that do some process. And the output of this can be another streaming. So I can have a streaming of streaming of streaming. And then with this, I have the concept that I can write in one place and read in a different place. And again, I don't care about this, the format. The other thing that is happening is the concept of the streaming itself. How long my data is going to survive there? Because it's not persisting in a disk, it's in memory. So I have my array, I append one element there, and then I have the, the producer that is adding elements there, mensages. And then on the other side, I have the consumer that is reading things there. My consumer can read and after read, delete, or my consumer can just read and give up, don't do anything. So how long my element is going to survive there? Depends of the framework, depends of the technology. There is different ways. So in Oracle CI streaming, as I said, is Kafka compatible. It means that you can use the Kafka code. Uh, guarantee that it is one to seven days. You, you, when you're providing the pass solution, you choose this. And then the data is there. And then there is a new functionality that when you, cons you can configure, do some configurations, of course, but when your consumer go there and read, you automatically save that thing on the object store. So then if my streaming stop to works, or if I fail network or something happens, then I can come back and read from the object store. There is the concept of the Lambda architecture as well, that uh, I don't touch my streaming, but everything that I receive there, I automatically save in Hadoop file system or any place. So I continue my streaming, my ETL, my processing in normal, but if something happens, I always have the copy on the Hadoop file system. The other concept that you need to know when you're doing the streaming is batch, micro batch, and windows. So here in my example, I have a serve, uh, sensor that sends data, so nine, six, eight, seven, but I can group them in a slice then in windows. My windows can be by number of message, can be by size, or can be any uh, rules that I want. For example, here, I receive the nine, the six, and the, eight, the, the four, and then I send the sun. And I can have different windows. My windows can overlap each other. So imagine that I want to send every time when I have five lines in my log, or every time that I achieve one megabyte, or every, every five seconds, and things like that. So I have different windows, and they, they can overlap each other. So then one of the famous user case that uh, you can see the benefits of the streaming is this one. This is the Google Analytics. So Google Analytics is kind of a JavaScript that you put on the website. So then you care about the page, the user, from where the user came from, what he did, the number of clicks, and things like that. So a easy way to do it is I can save the events in a normal database. But the problem is then is if I want to count then the number of clicks, I need to scan the entire table. So I'm going to do a select count in my table for know how many clicks the user did in my website. So it's easy to do it, but then I need a powerful database. If it, the guy messy, click a, lo a lot, it's going to be a problem. And if I have thousands of users at the same time. So then I have a second option. The second option is I can use OLAP. I can use a data warehouse. So I create a cube. So in my cube idea here, I can create different dimensions. And I can use my dimension, for example, one for the URL, 
one for the click, another for the IP address, another for the date. Then I solve the problem of I don't need to scan the entire table because when I, know, I want to know the number of clicks, I go in the dimension and I have the result straight away. The problem then, now I complicate how I'm going to do because I need to understand a lot, I need to understand the database, I need to understand how I create this structure. But if you want to go in a, let's say, a better way or a simple and a faster way, you can do with streaming. So again, every click or whatever I want to save, I add in my event streaming and I don't care about the format. So then I can have different functions, like for example here at the aggregator, that do this, the sum for me or count things and save this in another place. So then here I can read from writing one database and reading a different one. And then I don't need to care about the query because it's not running in time. I don't care about the knowing the, the database itself. So it's easy, faster, and probably cheaper. So then Oracle solution, we have OCI streaming. So why I should use OCI streaming instead of using the open source? So first is benefits is being in the cloud, it's, it's safe by the full. You use the cloud provider, so the clouds give you the traceability and the, the guarantee that the network is safe, so uh, the message is cryptographic and things like that. I don't need to care about my server. I don't need to care about a, a sponge or if I need to create more server or if I need more memory or if I want to do things and parallelize or if I want to start using GPU, and things like that. So uh, OCU, uh, OCI from Oracle, you don't pay, you pay just for read and write. So then the price is quite cheap. And then the other thing is you can use all your open source knowledge or Kafka knowledge because it's Kafka compatible. So then you can use Kafka and in theory you don't need to change anything. So when you use Kafka, you have a settings file that you need to put the ad address of the server, normally you use Zookeeper, and then you have configurations files. So if you decide to go OCI, and you have the Kafka knowledge, you can use the same code, you don't need to change any line of the code. The only thing that you need to change is the property files, where instead of putting the Zookeeper ports and informations, you put the Oracle OCI, Oracle Cloud Infrastructure things. So, but it, the other providers or the other competitors saying the same thing, look, we are Kafka compatible as well, so why Oracle is so special? So there is a, differentiator here when we say what is Kafka compatible or what is, not, what is not. Because there is, Kafka provides a lot of things and not all providers support all the things. So there is two main points on Kafka, is the consumer and the producer. Of course, you need to guarantee that you, you can able to write a producer and consumer, otherwise there is no streaming. But uh, Kafka has the key SQL, so the KSQL, so you can type queries on that thing. So uh, two weeks ago was the Kafka submit, and then last week was the Flume forward here in Berlin. And then the main topic or the buzzword around was the SQL, how I do SQL on the streaming without persist that thing. And how I can, what's the benefits of doing this? I can do my ETL on fly, I can save in a external table, and I'm going to show this, uh, how Oracle, or how you can do with Oracle database. And then there is a lot of things that is not there, but is in the, the roadmap. So as I said here, it's just showing the conf, conf file. So I do some changes, and then the files I can run, run and, uh, with uh, Kafka. So then I have this. So what is the best size of my message? So I want to imagine I have a big file or I'm not going to send the entire file, or video, for example, is a good, is a good example. M my file is too big, so this, the idea is I slice the file and I send parts of the files. And then on the other, the other side, I can gather the entire slices and have my file itself. But there is a trade-off between the size that I want to send. So here, if you look at the table, when the size of the file is small, the first line, for example, I can send more number of messages, of course. And then on the end, I have six and a half megas around. But if you look at the last line, 
if I increase the size of this, uh, the package or the message, of course, I send less message. And on the end, I have just eight. But if you go on the middle, I have uh, 50 as a size, then I have uh, around 200 messages, and I can send more megabytes on the end. So there is a trade-off between the size and the, the volume. Then this depends. You care about number of messages, you care about the size of message, or you care about the end result. And then the other thing is how I'm going to query that thing. So what I can do in real time. Everybody's talking about uh, querying the, the streaming on fly. So Oracle announced on the last open word three weeks ago, one month ago, or something like that. So the new version of the Oracle, you can do this command. So this is SQL begin, and you put the Kafka configurations. So what's happened now is you create a connection with the Kafka itself, so then I can perform queries. So here I'm doing a query in a specific topic, and then I can get the topic and save it as an external table or create a view of that thing. Even I can save it in a JSON, or I can save it a CSV and things like that. So then once I save the thing, I can do queries itself. So I'm doing query in a topic that it, in a streaming that it's in memory, it's not persist itself. So then you have a lot, of course, you have a lot of problems here. If I receive billions of messages per second, what's going to happen if I query that thing? So it's a kind of a trade-off. And then if I receive five, thousands of messages per second, if I save now in a table or in a object store or in a Hadoop file system, one second after is going to be different because I lose the last message. So here I can query the, a specific topic. For example, here I, I have a smart plug that gets the energy or the temperature readings or things like that. So I can check my streaming and read the data in real time. And then I can save this in a table, can be a external table, and then the external table, the path for the external table can be a object store or a Hadoop path. So I hope I give you guys a notion about uh, what is streaming and what we can do around. And of course, you can go for the open source uh, solutions. And then if you go for Kafka, there is APIs for the majority of the main language, Python, Java, Scala, Ruby, .NET, and things like that. The idea to go in a cloud is that uh, outside of the box, you have the path solution. You don't care about the server. You don't care about the infrastructure. And then you can scale in a easy way. Plus, you have the security and things like that. The Oracle solution is you have the, all that benefits, but you can query in a single way. And then you have the benefits of connect with the Oracle database and do queries in your time. So you can do this for ETL. And then you, you, the result of the ETL can be persist in a easy way. So this was my talk. Thank you. <laughs> Any questions? Do we have time for, time for questions? Yes, we have. So. Um, where exactly are the uh, Kafka messages originating from, are they coming from the application layer or are they coming from some um, uh, kind of callback or trigger within the, within the database? So the messages in Kafka, normally you have the producer. It's a you Yeah, so in your sort of... Uh, yeah, it's kind system. of a code that yeah. converts the data or do whatever you want. As I said, we don't care about the format and append this new element or the this match in my event streaming or my array or my pipe or whatever you want to call. So then the thing survives that up to seven days or depends on your hardware infrastructure. And then the other side, you have the consumer that reads that thing and do something with your messages. I can do my ETL, I can persist in a database or do some rules or use for a fancy visualization. So with your Oracle, you can query that array and do some transformation in real time. And you can probably save in a external table. And the path of the external table can be an object store or a Hadoop file system. 
So then you have the resulting easy way. You don't need code, let's say, for the output. But I mean, if I make, to, to talk through an example, maybe I'm, I'm, there's something I'm missing here, but if, uh, if I have an insert into a database table um, and I want that to, um, something to happen as a consequence of that in streaming, there's some kind of trigger within within or yeah. within the Oracle DB. I I I know more about the, Postgres. So the database itself, there is no relation with the streaming. So if you save on database, is there? Okay. There's no okay. Streaming. Okay. So if you want, you can have a code that reads the database and adds on the streaming. Okay. Okay. And then the CDC, the context is really common idea. So. Imagine that say, I want everything that's happened in one database, I want to cop for the another one, for example. So then you have something that is running and checking the, the difference or checking chains, and any change that happen, I add in my stream and I append in my log or my, my array or event logs. And then from the other side, I can have more than one program reading that thing and doing the actions. Okay, now I, 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 I understand and thanks. I, where I'm coming from with it is I saw someone talk about something like this in Postgres. A Postgres expert talked about it about three years ago and it was really, really clunky, the solution they had. So that, I was wondering how it fit in, but I understand where you're coming from with it. Thanks. Okay.